the universe. It's all vanishing. 2024 is going to be an amazing year for animated films. In fact, it's going to be a great year for all kinds of films and shows now that we are more or less past the Writers and Actors Guild strikes. So, you can expect some heavy duty releases in the upcoming year. In this video, we will explore the 13 most anticipated animated movies of 2024 that have all the potential to become blockbusters. So, without further ado, let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Transformers 1, September 13th, 2024. More than meets the eye, right? The catchy line from the Transformers theme song really captures the essence of the iconic robots. Starting as a cool, shape-shifting toy line from Hasbro back in the 80s, Transformers quickly evolved into a full-blown cultural phenomenon. We all remember the Transformers TV show that kicked off 1984 and then spun off into the Transformers, the movie, in 1986. And now, after nearly four decades, we're getting Transformers 1, an animated film that's true to hit the nostalgia button for those who grew up watching the original. Before we got the Michael Bay explosion fest, the first live-action Transformers movie hit the big screen with Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox headlining. Since then, we've seen a bunch of sequels and spin-offs, each adding something new to the mix. Paramount gave Transformers 1 the green light back in 2020, and fans have been buzzing like bumblebees ever since. We love a good origin story, right? And this film promises to dive deep into the backstories of our favorite Autobots and Decepticons. We're going back to Cybertron, their home planet, and we'll see how Optimus Prime and Megatron went from buddies to arch enemies. Plus, we're getting some heavy themes like societal inequality woven into the story. Lorenzo de Bonaventura, one of the franchise's producers, mentioned in a Joe Blow interview that they're aiming for an emotional story that could even lead to a trilogy. With characters like Alpha Trion and Sentinel Prime in the mix, we're in for a real treat that goes beyond just Optimus and Megatron. As for the release, well, Transformers 1 was originally slated for July 2024, but it's been pushed to September 13th, 2024. Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 So, have you seen the latest trailer of Infinite Earths on Warner Brothers' official YouTube channel? The entire gang including Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, The Flash, Shazam, and a whole host of others are up against some pretty mysterious forces and it's all happening across countless alternate universes. It's titled Part 1, signaling the start of what DC and Warner Brothers are planning as a trilogy. They're setting up a stage for an epic showdown with the Anti-Monitor, one of the biggest baddies in the DC universe. The movie is an adaption of the iconic 1985 DC comic Crisis on Infinite Earths. It basically brought together all the different DC storylines into one single universe. It was so big that it started the whole trend of using massive events to draw in audiences. We even saw follow-up stories focusing on individual Justice League members, like the Flashpoint storyline. This film fits right into the ongoing DC animated movie universe that kicked off in the mid-2000s. These direct-to-video films have been a hit, featuring not just the Justice League, but solo heroes like Batman and Superman too. Some fans are buzzing about the possibility of Crisis doing for the animated universe what the original comic did for DC Comics Justice League. Crisis Part 1 is dropping in 2024, split into three parts. We're still waiting on Warner Brothers to give us specific dates for each part, but it's definitely something to look forward to. Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse really hit it off, right? Now everyone's eyes on the next big thing from the franchise. Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse is the third film in its cool trilogy, and we're all set to see Miles Morales take on the multiverse and try to stop the villainous spot from wreaking havoc. Beyond the Spider-Verse is going to wrap up Sony's animated trilogy, but it's probably not the last we'll see of Miles, Gwen and the gang. Now, about the release date for Beyond the Spider-Verse. When it was first announced back in 2021, along with Across the Spider-Verse, it was set for a March 29th, 2024 release. But in July 2023, Sony pulled it from their schedule thanks to those WGA and SAG after strikes. Behind the scenes, we've got Kemp Powers, Justin K. Thompson steering the ship. They're being backed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller on the script, along with David Callahan, who worked on Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. This team's the same as Across the Spider-Verse, because 
because they were shot back to back. Lord and Miller had so many ideas that they split the story in two parts. As for the plot of Beyond the Spider-Verse, it's pretty hush-hush, but the huge cliffhanger at the end of Across the Spider-Verse gave us some hints. Miles is in hot water with a spider society and ends up on Earth-42, which is totally Spider-Man free. He's going to be dealing with his own version of the Prowler while Gwen and her team try to bail him out. Meanwhile, Miguel O'Hara is busy trying to keep the multiverse intact and Spot is becoming an even bigger threat. That's about all we know for now, but it sure sounds like it's going to be an epic ride. The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim. Last year, Prime Video really shook up things with The Rings of Power, which, by the way, is the most expensive show ever made. But Warner Brothers isn't stepping back from the Middle Earth game just yet. They keep the cinematic legacy of The Lord of the Rings alive with War of the Rohirrim, which is set to drop next year. It's going to be an anime adaption, drawing inspiration from Peter Jackson's legendary trilogy. Now the big question, when and where can we watch The War of the Rohirrim? Warner Brothers has set a release date for December 13th, 2024. David Zaslav, the big boss at Warner Brothers, has made it clear that they will only go for theatrical releases now, so don't expect this to hit streaming right away. But after its time in theaters and digital, you'll find it on Max, WBD's streaming service. The War of the Rohirrim takes us back 130 years before the two towers. It will be about Helm Hammerhand, the last of the first line of Kings of Rohan, and how the famous fortress Helm's Deep came to be. You might remember seeing a statue of Hammerhand in Peter Jackson's movie. This guy had a tough job keeping the Rohirrim safe during a pretty rough time, especially with the Dunladings causing trouble. King Helm had this run-in with Freca, a Dunlading with Rohirrim blood, who wanted his son, Wolf, to marry Helm's daughter Hera. But things went south and Freca ended up dead at Helm's hand. This sparked a full-on attack on Rohan by Wolf. Helm ended up in Helm's Deep and the rest, as they say, is history. But there's more to Helm than just that. He was a legend in life and death, and his daughter Hera had to step up and lead her people against those out to destroy them. The War of the Rohirrim is likely to dive into these tales, but how are they going to spin it? We'll just have to wait and see. Ultraman Rising. So Netflix is dropping a new animated Ultraman movie, Ultraman Rising, and let me tell you, it's taking Ultraman to a whole new level. Directed by the dynamic duo Shannon Tyndall, John Ayashima, this time Ultraman's facing something even his mighty powers can't tackle, fatherhood. And not just any fatherhood, he's got a baby kaiju to look after after he kills its mother in a duel. Here's the scoop on the story. Ken Sato, voiced by Christopher Sean, is a Japanese baseball player who heads back home with dreams of becoming the next Ultraman, Earth's Guardian. But things take a wild turn when he ends up taking care of a baby kaiju. There's this moment in the trailer where the baby sees Ken in his Ultraman form, and boom, it imprints on him. That's where the real adventure begins, with both of them navigating a world full of danger. The trailer keeps the details on the down low about the kinds of antics Ken and his unusual kid will get up to, but it's a teaser that really shows off how cool and stylish the animation is going to be. Thanks to Tuberaya Productions and Industrial Light and Magic, Ultraman Rising is set to hit Netflix in 2024, and it's definitely going to be something different for Ultraman fans. A superhero dad to a monster baby. Count me in for that. Whoa! The spirit realm, it worked! <laughs> Kung Fu Panda 4. All right, Kung Fu Panda fans, get ready, because Kung Fu Panda 4 is officially coming to theaters on March 8th, 2024. DreamWorks kicked off this beloved series more than a decade ago, and it's been a wild ride of animation and laughs ever since. Back in 2022, DreamWorks gave us that teaser of Poe in his epic battle stance. That got everyone hyped up, and they stuck to the March 2024 release date. Hernan Vivano from Universal Pictures Brazil even confirmed at X scene 2023 that the Brazil release is set for March 2, so it looks like everything's lining up perfectly. At CinemaCon this year, Jack Black, yeah, the voice of Poe, gave us a little glimpse of what's in store. After Poe got his chi sorted in the Valley of Peace in the third film, he's now off to the city to face a new villain, the Chameleon. This bad guy is bringing back some ghosts from Poe's past, like Tai Lung and Lord Shen, and Poe's got to find a new dragon warrior. It's been a long seven years since Kung 
Kung Fu Panda 3, but Jack Black's kept Poe's spirit alive with the Netflix series Kung Fu Panda The Dragon Knight. And hey, did you catch him voicing Bowser in the Super Mario Brothers movie last year? As for the rest of the cast, despite the actor strike, we're all hoping the original gang will be back. We're talking about Angelina Jolie, Dustin Huffman, Seth Rogen, Jackie Chan, Lucy Liu, and David Cross, the whole crew. Mufasa, the Lion King So there's a bit of buzz going around about Mufasa, the Lion King. Originally, we were all set for a July 5th, 2024 release, but it looks like we're going to have to wait a bit longer as it's been pushed to December 20th, 2024. Now, even though Jon Favreau worked his magic on the first live-action Lion King movie, he's sitting this one out. Stepping into the director's chair is Barry Jenkins. You know, the guy who bagged an Oscar for Moonlight. He's not penning the script, though. That's Jeff Nathanson's gig. The same guy who wrote the 2019 Lion King. But knowing Jenkins, he's going to sprinkle his own artistic flair all over the Disney flick. Plot-wise, Mufasa the Lion King is still kind of under wraps. When they first talked about it in 2020, it sounded like a Godfather Part 2 vibe, jumping between past and present. But more recently, it's been called a prequel. The teaser had Rafiki sharing Mufasa's backstory with Timon and Pumbaa, so maybe that's how they'll play out the timeline. There's also chatter that the movie might draw from the Lion King, A Tale of Two Brothers, a novel that delves into the young days of Mufasa and Scar. Kelvin Harrison Jr. is voicing a character named Taka, which, fun fact, is Scar's original name in the novel. So who knows, we might just see some of that story come to life. Music-wise, Hans Zimmer is back to compose the score. He's teaming up with Pharrell Williams, who worked together on the remake, and Nicholas Brattel. Elton John is probably not joining the party this time. He wasn't thrilled with the remake, feeling like the creative vision wasn't quite in sync with his. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is all set to zoom into cinemas on December 20th, 2024. We were initially gearing up for a July release, but hey, a little wait only adds to the anticipation, right? Or that's what I tell myself while I wait. Back in early August 2022, DreamWorks dropped the news, and it's been a slightly longer wait than what we used to with Sonic's cinematic adventures. But given the smashing success of the first two movies, a Christmas release totally makes sense. Production chatter's been on the down low, but given the timeline and the hefty visual effects work these films need, they're probably going to kick things off soon. Ben Schwartz is definitely coming back as the favourite blue hedgehog Sonic. He's likely to be joined by Colleen O'Shaughnessy as Tails and Idris Elba as Knuckles. The big question is about Jim Carrey returning as Robot Nick. He's hinted at taking a break from acting, so his return is up in the air. The Sonic team's pretty adamant they won't recast him as they really love what he brings to the table. The big team for the third movie is the appearance of Shadow the Hedgehog. While Kirk Thornton voices him in the series, there's talk of recasting for his movie debut. And with Shadow in the mix, who knows what other game characters might pop up. Plot-wise, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is picking up from that cliffhanger in the last movie. We've got Shadow causing trouble, and Agent Stone probably helped Robot Nick escape. You want a little more? The Garfield Movie The Garfield Movie is finally coming our way on May 24th, 2024, and thankfully, not on a Monday. It's landing in theatres during a jam-packed Memorial Day weekend alongside Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and the Mad Max Fury Road prequel Furiosa. Now, the scoop on the movie itself is pretty exciting. Garfield, voiced by none other than Chris Pratt, is set for his wildest adventure yet. He's teaming up with his long-lost dad, Vic, and guess who's voicing him? Sam Samuel L. Jackson. They're going to be neck deep in a high-stakes heist. Chris Pratt is no stranger to animation, with hits like the Super Mario Brothers movie under his belt, and Samuel L. Jackson as a cat, he's done it before in Paws of Fury. The Legend of Hank. Behind the scenes, we've got Mark Dindle directing and David Reynolds writing, the same duo from Chicken Little and The Emperor's New Groove. This writer's room also includes Paul A. Kaplan and Mark Torgrove. As for the storyline, it's classic Garfield with a twist. He's leaving his comfy indoor life for a wild outdoor heist, thanks to his dad, Vic. The movie's going to cut back and forth between the past and present, but hey, it's Garfield, so expect plenty of laughs along with the action. And if you're itching for more Garfield in the meantime, you can catch the live action films with Bill Murray as Garfield on Disney Plus. Is this what you're looking for? No! 
Despicable Me 4. Despicable Me 4 is coming our way on July 3rd, 2024. This franchise has been a massive hit, partly thanks to its star-studded cast. Speaking of which, we don't have the full cast list yet, but some big names already confirmed. Steve Carell is back as Gru, our favorite movie villain. Joining him are Kristen Wiig as Lucy Wilde, Gru's wife, and Miranda Cosgrove as Margot, the adopted daughter. Steve Coogan is also returning as Silas Ramsbottom. We're expecting Nev Sherrill and Dana Gaya to reprise their roles as Agnes and Edith. Carell himself has hinted at how crucial Gru's kids are for the upcoming film. Despicable Me 4 is in the capable hands of writer Mike White. While there's no official plot yet, we can make some guesses. The last chronological movie in the series, Despicable Me 3, ended with Drew taking over the minions and Gru and Lucy back in the anti-villain league. So it's likely we'll see them tackling a new supervillains world conquering scheme. Behind the scenes, the movie has some great talent. Co-directors Chris Raynord and Patrick DeLang are on board with Rachel Levy leading the music department. I didn't touch it. Orange is not my color. Not me. Hello. Ah! Oh my gosh, I'm anxiety. Inside Out 2. The movie is hitting theaters on June 14th, 2024, which is just about nine years after the original. Interestingly, it'll be opening the same weekend as Sony's Bad Boys 4. We've got some familiar voices coming back. Amy Poehler is returning as Joy, Phyllis Smith as Sadness, and Louis Black as Anger. However, Mindy Kaling and Bill Hader won't be back as Disgust and Fear due to some contractual stuff. Kaling even mentioned to The Wrap that she had had a blast with the first film, but won't be involved with the sequel. Stepping into the roles are Lisa LaPera and Tony Hale. Maya Hawke from Stranger Things is joining as a new emotion, anxiety. There are other emotions too, but we are still waiting to find out who's voicing them. The movie picks up with Riley, now a teenager, and it seems like her emotional headquarters is in for some major changes with the arrival of new emotions. If you remember the end of Inside Out, there was that button labeled puberty. Yeah, that's where things kick off in the sequel. Behind the scenes, we've got Kelsey Mann, known for his work on Onward, making his full-length feature debut as director. Meg LeFauve, who penned the original, is back on writing duties and Mark Nielsen is producing. The Tiger's Apprentice The movie is about Tom Lee, a Chinese-American kid who gets pulled into a world of magic after his grandmother's death. It was first announced way back in March 2019, and it's shaping up to be quite the adventure, especially with an all-star lineup of Asian-American actors, including Sandra Oh and Henry Golding. The Tiger's Apprentice, the first book in the trilogy, dropped in 2003. It's set in San Francisco and follows Tom Lee, who after losing his grandmother ends up being taken by Mr. Who, a talking tiger of all things. Mr. Who teaches Tom all about magic, and together with a crew of mythical creatures like the dragon Mistral, they embark on this wild mission to protect an ancient phoenix from some pretty bad characters. We're expecting the main story from the book to make it into the movie, but who knows? They might throw in a few twists and turns for the big screen. While there's no word yet on movies for the other two books in the trilogy, Tiger's Blood and Tiger Magic, fans are surely keeping their fingers crossed. The current release date for The Tiger's Apprentice is January 19th, 2024. It's had a few delays, originally slated for 2022, then pushed to 2023 because of the pandemic, and then late 2023 before landing on its current date. The plan is for a theatrical release, and later on, you might be able to catch it on Paramount+, Plus, given Paramount Pictures is behind the production. Oh, and there was a teaser released in February 2022, right at the start of the year of The Tiger. It just showed the movie's logo with 2020 which was the release date at the time. Spellbound. As far as the plot is concerned, Skydance Animation is keeping things under wrap. What we do know is that Spellbound takes us into a fantasy world teetering on the brink with forces of light and dark threatening to split it in two. Enter Princess Eileen, tasked with using her magical powers to save her kingdom, Lumbria, from eternal darkness. Along her journey, she meets some quirky characters who help her in her quest. Holly Edwards, the president of Skydance Animation, promised a magical world filled with compelling characters. Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem are on board, playing the King and Queen of Lumbria. Rachel Zegler from West Side Story and The Hunger Games prequel is voicing Princess Eileen. The cast also includes big names like John Lithgow, Nathan Lane, Jennifer Lewis, Andre De Shields, and Jordan Fisher. Behind the scenes, Vicky Jensen is directing and David Lippman is producing. The executive producer lineup includes John Lasseter, David Ellison, and Dana Goldberg. Linda Wolverton of Beauty and the Beast 
East and the Lion King fame, along with Lauren Hynek and Elizabeth Martin from Milan, are writing the script. As for the music, we've got Alan Menken, the legend behind scores for The Little Mermaid and Aladdin, teaming up with Glenn Slater from Tangled. Chris Montan from Frozen is the music producer. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave and like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thank you, everyone.